Hello everyone, my name is Nex, and today I just want to talk about how overpulsing a piston, or rather two pistons, can make switching reliable for these pistons. Well, basically, you know pistons that are fairly unreliable, as in uh, they are kind of random in how they act, but if you overpulse two pistons, and I will explain to you what that means and how it works, then you can make them reliable, and this is useful notably for some farms that use shifting floors, feed tapes, and all that jazz. So let's say you have a flower farm, and you want a shifting floor for the flower farm to break the flowers. As you can see, if we just run it at a standard max piston clock, it will not work. What should happen, or not really should, but what would be awesome if it would happen, is that it would shift back at max piston speed. But because of the uh, piston update order, which is random in better edition, um, this does not function properly. Now, if you are interested in the update order, I will link a document from Earth Computer down in the description, and it goes into detail how the better condition update order works, but that's not the point of this video right here. Now, of course, in order to make up for this, you can add more delay on the other side, and that will work more reliably, but as you can see, sometimes it will just still um, predominantly use one piston over the other, and uh, yeah, you can just add more delay and stuff, but it will ultimately end up being unreliable in some shape or form. And that is just, yeah, that cannot really be bypassed. And that's kind of annoying. Now the next step for us is to look at the max piston speed. So an easy clock that is maximum piston speed would be the torch repeater clock. Now we can just set this up right here. And as you can see, uh, the piston works at its maximum speed. It is one tick extension, and then it takes some cooldown on ticks, and then retraction, and that is an 8 game tick cycle. So that means this clock right here runs on an 8 game tick cycle, and that is the max piston speed. Now this means that this piston was receiving pulses every 8 game ticks. Now, if you use an observer clock, you know that observer clocks uh, don't work with pistons that well. If I just demonstrate that to you, so I have an observer clock and a piston. As you can see, it's kind of slow, but one thing you might not know is that if you hook up an observer clock to two pistons, so we just have this, and then we have two pistons right here. As you can see, they switch reliably. This is because the pulses that are given to the two pistons are faster than a single one can handle. So observers are a 6 game tick clock, which is 2 game ticks faster than uh, the previous one. And that means that usually it should be slow and unreliable. But if we add a second piston, it switches reliably. And that is what I mean by over pulsing a piston. Basically, if two pistons are powered from the same output from a clock, that is either 6 game ticks or 4 game ticks fast, then it will well, switch reliably. I can show you the same with a 4 game tick clock, although you will have to account that 4 game tick clocks, while they do also do the same effect, they still are slower. So as you can see, they switch reliably, but they are slower. And if you're wondering, this is not limited to this configuration right here. I also use this mechanic in my flower farm. And let's give it a shot, so let's just build something like this. Put a few blocks right here. And what we can do then is just have a bunch of redstone dust going across like this. And then we can just add an observer clock. As you can see, it will switch reliably. Now one thing, however, you have to account is that since they are powered from the same output source, what might happen sometimes is, I'm just going to demonstrate this like this, uh, that these um, blocks split and that they don't uh, match each other anymore. So things like these might happen, but with most shifting floors, farms, you know, pickles, um, flowers, etc., that should not really be much of an issue. And it was never an issue in my flower farm, well, because it's only the center area that matters. The only reason for the floor to shift is so that the flowers break, and that works just fine. And yeah. Now since we are on the topic, we should um, go a little more into detail into observer clocks. Now the problem with observer clocks in better condition is that while it is technically a 6 game tick clock, it will act 
sometimes as a four game tick clock, which is kind of weird. And well, basically it's a variable clock depending on how many pending tick updates there are in the chunk in which it is in. So that means it can either slow down or speed up or get really inconsistent depending on the amount of updates in its local chunk, which is a very big problem for using that clock in contraptions and stuff that want it to be reliable. And yeah, so that's why I prefer not using observer clocks when I can, but for simple farms, an observer clock is just the best thing. So for example, in my flower farm V1 and V2. Now I will show you some different three game tick clock. Now the simplest other three game tick clock would be just three repeaters in a loop. However, with this you have to regard, of course, that you have to use a setup like this to toggle it, which can be sort of complicated. So if I just place that right here, as you can see, that is a three game tick clock. Let's put two pistons right here. As you can see, it switches reliably, and yeah. There is also another three game tick clock that I have seen, and it looks like this, but turning it on and off is sort of weird. So what you have to do is pulse the one where the torch is off, and I did that in the wrong way around. You have to pulse this one where the torch is on, and then it will be a three game tick clock. However, turning it off and on is not something easy. You have to sort of power one, and then you would have to pulse the other. One simple solution would be in order to turn it off, you pulse both of those. I mean, you turn on both of those and to turn it on again, you would pulse both of those blocks, but it's kind of complicated. That one might even be more viable despite being bigger. So yeah, that one's kind of cool, but it's kind of hard to use. Again, you have probably seen this in my 1 to 9 ratio flower farm, so the dispenser noises are kind of loud, but as you can see, um, it pushes back the floors properly, and as you can see, it does split the floor there, since again, as I said, it's from the same output. And uh, yeah, this is not really a big issue, since only the center area matters. This is only where the flowers spread, and like I said, um, it has to be from the same output. When you add delay, it will just encounter the same issues as you would with another clock, so you will have to have it from the same output, otherwise the overpulsing won't work properly. Now another use of overpulsing is feed tapes. As you can see, I have set up my feed tape super smelter right here, and I am using a observer looking at its own dust clock basically. So what this observer does is that it powers the dust, it goes across, and it goes in front of him again. So that effectively makes a single observer 6 game tick clock. So uh, yeah, don't, you don't actually need a second observer to make a 6 game tick clock. And if we turn this off, it will reliably push the furnaces. And that is also a practical application of piston overpulsing. You can use it to make fairly reliable feed tapes. However, just like with the shifting floors, the two columns of furnaces are also prone to basically splitting, but again, not really an issue. I don't see the splitting being an issue for anything, but that's just a consequence of being powered from the same output. Now let's look at some clocks that will properly execute this functionality of pistons. First off, there is the comparator clock, and this is a 4 game tick clock. However, with this clock, you have to regard that you have to be at least three blocks away. So if we do this, it will work just fine. But as you can see, with the four game tick clocks, it's slower. But from that point on, that's too close to the comparator output, it doesn't work. You have to be at least three dust away. And from there, it will work just fine. The next one is a four game tick clock that is from Magilico. So Magilico created this clock, and yeah, this is a one white styleable for game tick clock. And if we look at this, just like I said, it reliably switches the pistons. Now this next one, this is simply a redstone block being pushed up and down. And when it goes down, the pulse the redstone dust, which powers the piston, and then it goes up again. So that is actually an eight game tick clock. But observers can detect uh, pistons that move at an 8 game tick cycle, and then it will give outputs of 4 game tick cycles. So, as you can see, we can just set up a simple switching circuit, and you see, it works just fine. 
Now the next one is pretty much the same. Well, not really the same, but the thing is that this piston runs on an 8 game take cycle. But the dust gets powered and unpowered also when the piston retracts. So not only when it extends, and that is also a 4 game take pulse. And as you can see, that works pretty well. Now the next one is just a simple 2 repeater layout. And that one uh, kind of needs this for me to work with it. As you can see, it works pretty well. Now this one is a torture burnout, but uh, don't use that one because occasionally it just stops. Well, it uses two torches in that configuration and that weight will never burn out. So yeah. Then of course, there's also this clock right here, which I showed before. This is a six game tick clock, so it will run the over pulsing at maximum speed. Then there is this 3 repeater clock, and like I said, it also works at maximum speed. Then just a classic observer clock, you can hook it up to anything, and it will run the over pulsing pretty well. And the rest I've set up are just 8 game tick clocks. So yeah, this is uh, pretty much all the clocks that work. I'm pretty sure that there are also some other clocks that work. There are a lot of 4 game tick clocks around, and the 6 game tick clocks are rather rare. So these three are the only ones that I have seen, but yeah. Oh, and I suppose there also is this one right here that counts as a six game tick clock because it's basically just an observer clock, but with only one observer, which is kind of neat, I suppose, but yeah. So I hope I helped you understand how this works and why this works and its practical applications. And yeah, it's a pretty useful thing that we have in Battle Condition especially since pistons are usually considered very unreliable and that is one way to make use of pistons and still have something reliable out of them. If you like these explained videos, then let me know in the comments. Now, um, thank you very much for watching. Uh, make sure to subscribe because I keep interesting videos like these coming on a regular basis. My next and bye bye.